Praise God, praise God, people of God. We are so humbled to be here live once again. We thank the good Lord for His grace and mercies. You are live on Asa TV, and today is an interview session. My name is Elder Michael Asante, your host, and today I deem it a fringe benefit. I have a great brain in the house, a woman of God. The good Lord is using her so much to touch lives touching lives across the globe and she's here live with us um, she is in the person of dr mrs grace Usu abuaji yeah so today my lawyer's wife is here <laughs> my lawyer's wife is here so i'll not even wait for the shout out uh, regards to you um, lawyer ernest Usu abuaji elder uh, today your wife is live at the studio with us on NASA TV and today it's a mental health talk. Um, she's a doctor and she's here. She has in-depth knowledge uh, about mental health. So wherever you are, I humbly plead you share this um, link, share the broadcast for someone to also connect with us. It will be a great blessing. Today is going to be an educative um, program. Let's pray wherever you are our most gracious father we thank you today we thank you for the viewers of asa tv we thank you for the life of our dear doctor that you have brought here into the studio we pray for utterance may your spirit take over the waves and cause many to be a blessing today in jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen amen doc you are welcome thank you so welcome much. you're welcome <laughs> to asa tv studio mm. uh, you are looking so sharp Thank uh, you. I like your watch. My my <laughs> brother is doing a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. So um, today it's all about mental health stock. And as we were looking around, we saw that you are experienced in it. The good Lord is using you widely um, across the globe. And um, viewers, um, Doctor Mrs. Grace Usuabuaji is also the visioneer for refresh rs foundation so as the interview goes on you will get to know more about refresh rs foundation the motive for the formation of this uh, foundation um before that uh, i would please ask if we ask who is dickness dr mrs grace <laughs> um i am a member of the church of pentecost okay. i'm a Presbyter, okay. and I have a doctor of pharmacy, wow. and a, I'm a fellow of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists. Wow! And so, through that, I am a consultant in clinical pharmacy, wow. specifically uh, mental health wow. and neuropsychiatry. And I'm also the executive director of Refresh Rx Foundation. Thank God so much. So, <laughs> this is a doctor of pharmacy. Um, I think recently we had the Accra 2023. Is it Accra 2023? The All African Games. You were playing great role. What was your role in that um, conference? At the oh, program? so there are a number of committees. Mm. I was on the medical subcommittee. Wow. To look at um, the medic uh, medical aspects. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I was on there are a lot okay. There are a number of committees okay. on the African games and I had a privilege to work on this medical subcommittee. Wow. And we were responsible for looking at making sure that the games went on safely in okay. terms of health. So in terms of facilities and also the delivery of care wow. and sanitation and also wow. um, to prevent any disasters. You are so blessed. In fact, <laughs> when I saw um, the post, I said, wow, our doctor is blessed because in the whole Ghana, we have a lot of um, doctors of pharmacy. So if you were privy to be selected to be part of that committee, um, viewers, that also shows um, the good work she is delivering. Um, today you get to know more about her. I know the youth are following. She will be a role model for you wherever you are. Yeah. So can you briefly tell us a little about your family, your married life, um, <laughs> your children, briefly? Okay. Um, 
once again, I want to thank God that I found Christ okay. at a young age. Um, I went through Sunday school by age 14 and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. You know, going through Sunday school, you have so many opportunities to um, take the salvation um, mm. message. Um, I got a time, I said, okay, this is it. Mm. And I accepted Jesus and I experienced his peace. And I was also privileged to be among the pioneer teenage group that was spearheaded by um, the retired apostle Kudia, okay. the former G uh, yes, general yeah. secretary. Uh -huh. And so, we, by God's grace, we were in the church, we grew in the church. Yeah. I met in my the husband. The church of Pentecost? Yes, right? the church of Pentecost. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was fun. The teenage the youth were like a family. Um, the leaders were very supportive. And then, by God's grace, we turned out well. I met my husband in Pensa. Wow. We married. In so Pensa, KNUS? Yes. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> by God's grace, we married for the past. Wow. 18 years. 18 years in marriage. <laughs> oh, we thank God so much. <laughs> wow. So, you are blessed. blessed with three children. Three children. Oh, okay. Wow. We thank God so much. We thank God. So, your education wise, I think. Um, I know you went to Holy Child, right? Yeah, so briefly, how was campus life then? Holy <laughs> Child. We were trained to be women of substance. Okay. And we, we didn't get to go out a lot. Mm. Yes, once you entered the school, you had to stay in and we had a lot of role models. Mm -hmm. Past two bands came and encouraged us to, and then uh, headmistress and teachers also encouraged us to be not just um, intelligent, hardworking, um, professionals, but also be women of substance. Wow. Uh, so. so I think that has had impact in your life. <laughs> and now you are a true woman of substance. Uh, may I know some about your passion? Um, your what drives you in life because you have formed a foundation yes refresh RS foundation yeah so your passion led to that right so can you tell us briefly about your passion what you all right so i've always wanted to do social work mm. i always wanted to work with the vulnerable in society and so in my work at kolebu Yes, I worked in Kolebu for 20 years Wow! as a clinical pharmacist okay. and I worked specifically with um, the Department of Psychiatry okay. and then I also worked with the neurologist and so um, I found myself working in an area that helped people who were vulnerable and I realized that those who get to come to the hospital uh, those who knew somebody who knew that there was care and then reached out for that care. Mm. And I realized that um, some of the interventions offered to those who come to us in the hospital do work. And I'm asking myself, um, what about those who don't know? Those who can't even identify that what is going on is a mental health issue. What about those who, because of these challenges is affecting their academics. Um, who, who, who can they tend to? And so I developed a passion that, okay, let me form an NGO that will advocate for the integration of mental health in every aspect of our living and care. Every aspect of our care has some mental health component. Mm. And most people are not even able to identify um, the mental health issues or the symptoms. And for example, I always say that there are a lot of divorce cases that we have um, can trace it to mental health issues. Mm. Uh, and that's where not handled well. The people don't even, so you may, the person may exhibit something that borders on mental health, but you attribute it to their behavior or their character and you may not be able to give that support the person needs and it can lead to 
research. So could, could we say you that know, um, your research in that field brought out that passion? When we were growing up, were you having that passion to help people with mental health issues? No, so it's it my, my professional, mm. my profession as a clinical pharmacist. Mm. Uh -huh. So I wanted to do social work, help okay. the vulnerable, especially in academics. Yes, um, helping people to be able to achieve their dreams. Uh -huh. I have always believed that it is possible mm -hmm. and that we can defy the odds. I've also believed that um, the basic level of education of any Ghanaian should be a first degree minimum. Okay. Uh -huh. So this also led me, combining that I realized that, oh, um, People with special needs. So it's a good question you asked yeah. me. So it triggered from people with special needs. When we say special needs, those who are challenged yeah. uh -huh, um, in one way or the other. And I realized there's help. So I began thinking, researching. So again, we went out to do a research. We, we interviewed about nine different people, ex experts in um, mental health, education, and then people with lived experience of mental health and what they find out. So what are the causes of poor school performance? What are the myriad of issues? Uh -huh. It's not that the person is stupid or mm -hmm. uh -huh. we label people. What is really causing that? And because I really believe that the brain is not static. The brain will say it's elastic. You can really learn, you can re uh -huh. and so there's room for everybody and based on that based on our findings we launched our NULU project okay. which is no one left out okay. where we want to create awareness about causes of poor school performance and also offer remediation uh -huh. so remediation is about adopting schools okay. doing baseline assessments to see what is really causing the poor school performance in a particular school then we design interventions to uh, remediate yeah. thank you okay. thank you so much I'm so then sorry we are also going to the prisons of Ghana again the vulnerable because um, about 90% of the youth who end up in our prisons have mental health issues and even inside the prison because of the conditions there some also that 10% also may also develop mental yeah. health issues so these mental issues can keep sending our youth back into the prisons and so we, we designed a, pro, a program for them called the freedom project mm. which will be launching very soon very soon wow god bless you so much beloved i this is just the opening uh -huh. so if your friend has not connected kindly um share the link for someone to also join um, in fact a lot of people are having mental health issues uh, sometimes someone the home the person is coming from yes the parents has not been able to help so financially that one is even a mental health issue so some people even tend to become thieves robbery because of these mental health issues so these are the things today we are here to address on asa tv um, if you just connected us live or joined us live on asa tv you are so blessed. It was not a mistake for you to join us. You are privy. And today we have Dickness Dr. Mrs. Grace Ousu Abwaje in the studio live with us. And our topic and our discussion for today is um, the Bible and the science of mental health. The Bible and the science of mental health. So now that we are going to delve deep into it, all that went on was just an opening. Yeah, so um what is mental health challenge if we bring mental health and then science view on mental health then we also look at the bible focus on mental health okay so sometimes when we go around uh, to various groups creating awareness you ask what is mental health mm. so mental health is not madness and mm. we'll plead with um all our viewers um to try not to use those words because somebody near you may be going through a lot and may even be contemplating suicide. So using those, you are mad, I mean, all those words we use can 
stigmatize people and they will not come out. Mental health, everybody has a mental health. Mm -hmm. It is the health of your mind. Okay, so mental health is the, the health, health of your of mind. Your mind. Okay. And it has four components. So okay. when you look at the WHO definition, it says it's a state of health okay. in which one can identify their own potential or their capacity or their, they can dream and have, believe they have a future. And also they have the capacity to cope with stress. Mm. And then the third one, work productively. Mm. And the fourth is to contribute to their community. So these four dimensions should be present, is present in everybody's life. Mm. And if any of them, you fall short in it, either through genetics or your environment or some traumatic experiences you went through or your lifestyle choices, then you may reach a point and you don't see any value in yourself. You cannot identify that you have potential and it can lead to mental disorders. Or you get to a point you can no more cope with stress, mm. then it can lead to mental disorders. And if you cannot work productively, it can also or you are not able to make a contribution to your society, how you relate with others, your empathy, your ability to volunteer, and desire to make a difference. So any of these aspects, if you fall short of it, then we say that your mental health is poor. And if there's no remediation and goes on for a long time, then it's going to affect your relationships, it's going to affect your work, and then you may be sent to the hospital and a psychiatrist may diagnose you with a mental disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we all have mental health and then it's a disorder. If any, all of us from time to time when you are bereaved or you go through a traumatist, you may feel that you are not worthy or you can't cope with stress or your work is affected or how you relate to people. But it may be for a period, then you bounce back. Uh -huh. If you are not able to bounce back and it prolongs, and now it's affecting your working relationship, then you may be diagnosed as a disorder. Wow. So we have poor mental health, which you could do something about. If it prolongs, then it becomes a mental disorder. Wow. I think this, this topic is of interest. Um, the reason why we chose this topic, um, recently we had one Nigerian big businessman, he's a big businessman in terms of um, social pedestal hierarchy, you will say that he's um, of like a billionaire or something. Uh -huh. But we were shocked that he committed suicide. Yeah, so the question that came was what precipitated to that? Was it he, because he had the money? People were not expecting him to do that. Okay, we have other people too outside, a lot of people. Maybe they're expecting something. Mm -hmm. The thing is not coming, and before you realize, they are turning suicidal. Mm. So all these things are of interest. Mm. That's why today we brought um, the one who is professional in that field, um, Dickness Doctor Mrs. Grace Oswabwaji, to help us. And to the glory of God, she's also a woman of God. She's filled with the Holy Spirit. So the mm. things that she's saying here right now, uh, would be a blessing. It's not just a counseling from any doctor, mm -hmm. but a counseling who also has a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, in our slogan, Taking the Globe for Christ, uh, I think you have said science view on mental health, right? So, what is the Bible focus on mental health too? Can you help us? Uh -huh. with so, that? looking at the topic, mm. um, I want our viewers out there as we are taking the globe for Christ, to know that from my study of the mind, mm. um, psychiatry, neurology, I have come to realize that there's no difference between what the Bible says and science. It's not as if if you believe if you are a scientist, you shouldn't believe in God. Mm. And it's not as if um, God and signs are contradictory or against each other. Science, God created the world and science discovers what God 
has created. And he said it is his pleasure to hide them and it is his pleasure for us to discover it. Uh -huh. So there's nothing like scientists should not be Christians. In fact, um, most of our discoveries, most of our inventions that we are enjoying now, were discovered by Christians or people who believe in the existence of God. So that's what I want our viewers to understand based on my research and findings. And then also, I also found out that what we see in the study of the mind or the study of the brain is confirmed by the Bible. Mm. So, for example, scientists have found out that if somebody, the brain is full of neurons, and these neurons are interconnected with each other, like the way branches of a tree connects with each other, um, forming so many connections. And if you keep thinking positive thoughts, then when your brain is examined under a lens, it looks like a flourishing tree. Wow. But if you are caught in the negative, maybe based on trauma or genetics or whatever risk factors makes it, because the brain is designed to think negative and positive. Mm. And so if you want to step out of your house, the positive side will say, go, go for it, go for your dreams. But the other side of your brain will also tell you that, be careful, don't go at night, go during the daytime, watch the road. So these systems that are in our brain, are supposed to work together okay. and keep us in the balance but sometimes people through what they hear or through some experiences are stuck in the negative think about negative 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 and when you are not using the positive side of your brain joy happiness and uh, hope and all those the your brain it prunes uh -huh. the brain doesn't like um any ideal <laughs> parts mm. of the brain. So it prunes like the way you prune leaves mm. from yeah. a tree. Uh -huh. And so looking at this analogy, somebody who is positive has a flourishing brain. Mm. Somebody who is negative has a brain that looks like a, hama, a tree in a hamatan, has lost all its leaves, is dry, the, the branches have tangled mm. together. Then um, you come to the Bible. And the Bible says that we should be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. But everything, with prayer and supplication, make known your request mm -hmm. to God. And then it also says that cares is anyone. Mm -hmm. If I'll open Jeremiah chapter 17, um, if I should read, uh -huh. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Mm -hmm. I found it very interesting that the mm. same scenario that we see in science is described in the Bible. Mm. It says that um, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5, this is what the Lord says, cares are those who put their trust in mere man. Mm. Other version says that cares is anyone who puts mm. their hope in man, man, who rely on human strength mm. and turn their hearts away from the Lord. God he says that I'm your source, mm. be anxious for nothing. We pray and supplication, make known your request. So if you are anxious, you are worried, and God is not your hope, not your focus. Because if God is your hope and your focus, the first uh, dimension or pillar of mental health is that you know who you are, mm. your value, your capability. You draw it from God. He says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But if you do not believe you are capable and all that, then you are saying you are not relying on God and then it means you fall under this case and what will happen you'll be like a stunted shrub in the desert mm. with no hope for the future and you live in the barren wilderness in an inhabited salty land but mm -hmm. blessed are those who trust in the oh, Lord gosh. this is the end yes the uh, King James and NIV also bring it out very mm. clearly uh -huh. The NLT. Yeah. Yes, it says that they say, blessed, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord. The King James says, blessed is the man whose hope is mm -hmm. the Lord. Uh -huh. 
and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Mm. They are like trees planted along a river bank mm. with roots that reach deep into the water. Mm. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Mm. So for somebody caught in the negative, this is the state of your brain, withered, dry, hamatan. For somebody who is positive, has a flourishing brain, like a tree with leaves in season. So this shows that what the science, mental health science is saying is the same thing mm. what the Bible is saying. So um, for our viewers, it's very critical mm. that you make the Lord your hope. Mm. And if you have any challenges with that, you have to first pray that God should help you to trust Him. Mm. If not, you are at risk of poor mental health. Mm. Uh -huh. And then the second analogy in, in the science of mental health is that um, there are thoughts that come to our mind. Uh -huh. And every day there are so many thoughts that come to our mind. Sometimes we are not conscious of it. That's why sometimes you'll be there, you are very happy, but suddenly you feel sad. And you may not be able to trace why am I suddenly feeling sad. Uh, the Bible will say these are the fiery darts of the enemy. Mm. Ephesians mm. chapter 6. Mm. It says that what do we use to quench the fiery darts of the devil? Mm. It's our shield of faith. Mm. So if these thoughts come and say you are not good, you won't amount to anything, you are not beautiful, you cannot work. You have to counteract it with the word of God. Mm. Uh -huh. So these are the fiery that's so from the sign from the Bible, science will say these thoughts come to your mind. And the Bible is saying that yes, they are fiery that's that's what will you to counteract it? The word of God. Mm. Uh -huh. So science will also tell you that okay, you see a psychologist, they take you to a top therapy to try to change your perception and your thoughts. Then the other thing is that when a thought comes to your mind, then your thoughts will lead to how you feel. So right now, if I say that, oh, um, if I say something negative, it will, you you start start you start feeling different. Mm -hmm. So there are some chemicals in our brain that regulates happiness and sadness and you need all these things because if somebody has died and you are told that somebody your mother has died you shouldn't find you laughing you should show the appropriate response so there are chemicals that regulate the sadness and then the joy so once the thought comes to your mind and it's a negative thought your brain will start producing these chemicals and it will lead to how you feel and then how you feel now, how you see yourself, your perception, and then your behavior will also be changed. Uh -huh. So science will say that capture these thoughts. So when you see a psychologist, they have some cognitive behavioral therapy where you look at your thoughts, you take time to examine your thoughts. Sometimes you are behaving in a certain way. It's all because you have not really taken time to analyze your thoughts challenge your perception uh -huh. and so the this, this science will say that okay let's challenge your thoughts let's challenge your perception be aware that how you think is informed so if you are depressed or going through any difficult situation it's because of your thoughts informing how you feel and then your behavior so if you can change your thoughts or so when it comes to the bible the bible says in uh, what second corinthians chapter 10 mm -hmm. That mm. uh -huh. should we read it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse three mm. says that um, we are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use God's we mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. Mm. So all the battles of our life is here. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Whatever anybody is doing to you, remember that it's not the person. Look beyond that person. Remember your battle is not against flesh and blood. 
but it's to win the war in your mind. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And these strong words of reasoning, dogmas, mindsets, paradigms. He says that we are to, God's word is to knock them down and to destroy false arguments. You are not good, you cannot make it. What is the Bible saying? They are false arguments. Mm. Some people are challenged, the thoughts that go through their mind, what they tell themselves, some people hear voices. These are false arguments. And we are to destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. So anything that is contrary to the word of God is a proud obstacle. Mm -hmm. And we are to capture them. And they are rebellious thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So just as you go to see the psychology, you take it through. You see that's what? True, we capture these rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Somebody will say, um, how would you be able to capture them and bring them to obey Christ? Uh, thank God, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, um, you pray to God. It's a gift to all those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have an opportunity. And when you accept Him and you believe on His name, you believe that everything He has said is true. Some people are Christians, but they don't believe in the name. But they don't believe that Jesus is all that he says he is. They say it with their mouth. Uh -huh. But if you believe, then you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Then as you speak in tongues, yes, some of, sometimes you want to, the thoughts are not going away. Some of the emotions are not going away. But as you begin to speak in tongues, you edify yourself, you strengthen yourself. And true, the Bible says that we don't know how to pray. Mm. But the, um, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmity. Yeah. And then he prays through us yeah. uh, according to the will of God. So as we speak in tongues, then these thoughts are captured. Then another thing I'll leave with us is that um, we are more than our brains. Mm. We are more than our brains. Uh, we have a soul. We mm. are spirits having a soul and living in a body. Okay. And your body is designed to work with some chemicals. Uh -huh. So if you, be, if you feel afraid, if you feel sad, if you are you're having too many thoughts going to your at the same time, these are all mediated by some chemicals in our brain. But we are more than the chemicals in our brain. As I said, if you feel, if you get hurt, your body is designed to produce a chemical that is going to make you cry. But you are more than your brain. So you can tell, you the spirit inside can say that I can choose not to cry. Somebody has hurt me, I can choose not to be offended. Uh -huh. And so sometimes because we, we say the brain is like a good servant, but a bad master. If, let's say you went through a very traumatic experience, maybe you were raped, and so these thoughts keep coming to your mind, it made you sad, you are worried all the time. What you have done is that you train your brain to, from time to time, maybe three times a day, or once a week, or on a particular day of the year, or a particular month, to relive all your experience. Your, the brain is said that every experience we go through, the brain stores it. And so all your bad experiences... It's more than a, pa a power bank. Yes. Great story. Yes. And even <laughs> your surroundings, even if you say you are sitting here reading the Bible, your brain is recording everything around you. Uh -huh. That is why you may be sitting here reading your Bible. And then some children will be learning how to learn some rhymes in this house. Three days later, you'll be able to say those rhymes, but you didn't plan to say it. Your brain has recorded okay. all that. Uh -huh. So, if you understand that me, these are my brain. I am more than my brain. My brain is designed that based on how I feel to release some chemicals. So if I start smiling, you see that your brain has received a signal to release endorphins, chemicals that make you happy, and dopamine. If you are sad, then the opposite comes. So you can stop it. You can, by the grace of God, stop some of these emotions, mm. stop some of these feelings, and choose a different feeling. Uh -huh. And also understand that, all right, over three, four, five years, I've been telling, reliving some past experiences. Mm. So my brain is used to so whether I like it or not, my brain will keep bringing me those images, bringing this video, very, very um, 
Exact. So that you even begin to feel, if it was pain you went through, the thoughts and the images that will come to your mind will come with that accompanied pain you felt. But if you can tell your brain that we are no more going to relive those thoughts, but you give your brain a different work to do, we are going to think positive. So where, where does this come mm. in? Mm. Philippians mm. chapter 4. Mm. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. 4 yeah. uh -huh, verse 8. It says mm. that whatsoever is true, yeah. whatsoever is noble, uh -huh, think about these things. So if you're able to renew, that's why when you come to um, God, uh, when you are saying, you say what? Renew your, your mind. mind. All these things from your childhood, from the time you were in the mother's womb, all the experiences your mother went through, you experienced it. Growing up, your mindset, your experiences, the good, the bad, has shaped your behavior and your habits. And to be able to change it, it says that science will tell you that to rechange your hard drive, mm. which is your brain, so that you can get over, repeat good things, get up every day, think about good things, repeat like five times a day, um, think about new things, and as you are doing that, the old things will be formatted, and then these new things will come. That is the science. When it comes to the Bible, what does it say? It says what? Meditate on the word day and night, and that you may be careful to do it, and you'll be successful. So sometimes people, the youth will say, oh, I can't do what is good. I can't do what is good. I just the Bible says your antidote to sin, your antidote to your weaknesses, is to just take the Bible and read morning and evening. Morning, you just be doing that as you are reading. You have the grace to do what is right, and this is the same thing the science will tell you. That's why they talk about the power of visualiz visualization. Put something in front of you if you know that you want to build a house or you want to achieve this, take pictures, put in your room, be looking at it, be thinking about it, and it will come to pass. Yeah. It's true. It's true. And the Bible says what? We should believe. Science says just by believing you will get. The Bible also says just by believing you will get. But people reject. It looks too simple. So they go to see Juju, they go and do Sakawa and all that. It's just by believing. It works. So science works. The Bible also works. Wow. God bless you so <laughs> much. In fact, um, our time, we have exhausted all of our time. It's, it's, it's an interesting um, discussion today. Mm -hmm. And the topic is so interesting mm -hmm. too. God bless you so much, Doc, for the enlightenment. Mm -hmm. um, if you are here and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, beloved, I, I open the space for you. There is an opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. We have a doctor here. Um, she's so learned. Okay, she, she could have used her life to do a whole lot of things she liked. But as she got to know Christ, she realized that everything science and everything they move with the word of god so if you become a proper doctor a proper doctor is someone who knows the word of god okay so not always that science contradicts with the word of god is those who do not know god that tends to bring out their own ideologies which later leads them to uh, catastrophe or mayhem um, in fact the word of god says in second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 if you are here i'll read from the king james version he said for god hath not given us the spirit of fear if you are here i just want to encourage you that god has not given you the spirit of fear fear means false evidence appearing real it is from the devil it is a scheme of the enemy fear is false evidence appearing real it's a scheme of the enemy that he uses to uh, trap a lot of people for you to come out from the shells of the enemy is that you ha have to think that god has given you the spirit of power that given you power love and of sound mind hallelujah yes so sound mind so regardless of what you are going to if you will think right know that god is with you he will never abandon you. Sometimes what you are going through shows that what you are thinking is right. You are aging. No one is coming. No one is proposing to you. You are hitting your 40s. 
you are asking yourself a lot of questions. Am I going to be like this forever? Can I give birth? All these things are forces that are going through the thought of man. But what the word of God says is that pull those thoughts to the word of God. Try to have a great intimacy with the word of God. Regardless of where you are coming from. Maybe your mother has not been able to pay your fees. Your parents, your father did not take care of you. That does not mean you should tend to be a drunkard. That does not mean you should associate yourself with um, drug addicts or people who, whose life will not be impactful to you. It's rather an opportunity for you to get more closer to God. God, God wants to use you to do something. God, God bless you so much. You have become a great blessing to us. Honestly, I'm so touched. I'm so touched by this because a whole lot of people are going through a lot. Suicidal cases. Sometimes you hear, I, I receive calls because of the media works. Someone calls me, Michael, do you know that I, I was going suicidal? I nearly committed a suicide. And that it will be just small things. Things that be just small. The person is just looking for this. Child bed, God gives it. Whatever thing that you are going to, don't stress do not just put pressure upon yourself. We leave, release those things that you have put, put into your thoughts. There are a lot of things in your thoughts. Some people even are thinking whether some malam that they met the other time is the one who, who is going against them or their past relationship that some occult or something is working against them. All these things, when you believe them, it will work for you. But when you come out from the shelves, know that you have overcome it god will help you so if you are here and you have not accepted your lord jesus christ as your lord and personal savior i will humbly lead you to um, that then doc will pray for you then you bring everything to an end wherever you are just lift up your hands if you have not accepted the lord jesus christ or as your lord and personal savior maybe you might have accepted him but the life that you are leading does not go well today doc has given us the antidote the antidote is to meditate upon the word of God day and night. Meditate it every time. So if you are having an addiction, if you are battling with pornographic addiction or any addiction, if you are there, if you doesn't sleep with a woman or a man, you cannot be by yourself, you are not married yet, but the things that you are doing does not align with the word of God. All that you have to do is to meditate the word of God. Get closer to the word yeah. of God. The word of God is spirit and life. Yes. The word of God is God himself yes. coming to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So just lift up your hands. Say, I, I believe that Jesus Christ I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It is, the Son of God. It is for my sins it is for my sense that He died for me. That he died for me. It is for my justification. It is for my justification that He resurrected on the third that day. He resurrected on the I, third accept day. Jesus I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. My Lord and personal I will Savior. live for Him. I will live for him all the days of my life. All the days of so my life. help me God. So help me and God. write my name write my in the name. book of life. Shout a big amen. Amen. God bless you so much. As Doc will pray for us. So Doc, you please pray for our viewers. For us. Father, you said in your word that we are in a new covenant. You give us a new covenant. We came through Jesus Christ, your son, coming on earth to die for us and rising again on the third day which this is the gospel and in this new covenant you promise that no more will anybody need to teach us you promise that you will give us a heart of flesh and not of stone you will write your words upon the tablet of our heart and no one will need to teach us and we'll walk in your ways father this day we come before your throne and father we petition the throne of god for everybody for all christians especially those who have accepted you today that father this word will be fulfilled in their lives that father as they have accepted you as their lord and personal savior and all those who have all done so in the past this word will be fulfilled in their lives that you will give them a heart of flesh and not of stone that you remove the hardened stones of their heart and give them a heart of flesh and father you put your words in your their, their heart. You write your words upon the tablets of their heart and they will not need everybody to teach them and they will walk in your ways and do what pleases you. 
keep all of us in the narrow way till we meet again in jesus name amen amen god bless you so much in fact as the discussion was ongoing the holy spirit gave me um a word and this is a word um have you seen this thing this what i'm holding okay what we are using for our um program is a receiver so the mind is like a receiver we are here for a purpose the purpose is for us to have an interview session and as we are talking we have best chipping we have um the air blowing and a whole lot and this receiver is receiving a whole lot of things okay but what the media one who will go and edit will pay attention to is the, the 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 discussion that is ongoing he will go and mute other things that are um conflicting with what the, the message that is coming so your mind is like a receiver mm -hmm. what are you feeding it mm -hmm. the mind is always there to catch uh -huh. if it sees this it will catch but yours is to block mute some of the things and get the right thing may the good lord bless you so much <laughs> we thank god so much for his word so you are live on asa tv once again i hope you have shared to bless another we'll take a shout out from doc maybe you want to greet some one two people then we we'll finish oh uh, i want to say uh, thank you to all my donors and sponsors and supporters and my uh, committed staff and to everybody in the church of peace because and worldwide um, stick to jesus mm. he is an answer to mm. every problem mm. just try him. thank you amen then uh, regards to your husband <laughs> 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 lawyer and also Abwaji is a very good man uh, he has been a great blessing to this ministry um, in diverse ways which he knows uh, so may the good lord bless him lawyer we also have our fire conference loading and um, it's hitting coming more the waves is everywhere and this time round is going to be massive and we have it the date is 21st of september 2024 at the church of pentecost kanishi estate assembly near mother's inn not kanishi so near mother's inn so beloved make a date with us the flyer will be coming out soon so you know it's a great surprise that is coming we have doc and a whole lot of people are coming great people that you've seen them all of them are coming down may the good lord bless you we are looking for sponsors partners the work of god requires um, sponsors and partners lgbtq plus people are pushing in money money to sponsor the, the, their activities the word of god if we can also battle them then we need sponsors so wherever you are you can be a blessing we have flyers we are going to run a whole lot of things the speakers we need to take off the underarium those who come in some from kede a whole lot of places so we want you to be a blessing to us i cannot do it alone my media they cannot do it but with your help we can make it happen so i want god to help you by availing yourself to be a blessing to us our number is 0243 235019 again 0243 235019 my name is michael asante god bless you taking the globe for christ thank you thank you Kuzunami ya kibulechi nekele Manu Gisako Kurama Shea